One of my personal issues with the limitations of AI generative art tools, including Mid Journey, which this masterclass is all about, is the low resolution output that you get. Because I am a quality, a quality, I'm shooting this video in 8K right now, because I can. I produce my videos in 4K. I want the crispest, highest definition. And when it comes to printing things, like I do on my shirts here and the other merch that I have at analogdreams.threadless.com, if you are interested in picking up some of my glitch art and AI work for yourself, uh, you need high resolution. You need a high density of pixels because it's designed to be blown up really big and be seen highly detailed. And you, the last thing you want to present is a blurry, soft, pixelated image. This episode of the Masterclass is all dedicated towards learning the upscaling mechanisms within Mid Journey specifically so you can get the highest resolution output or get the best output for you and learning what to do to take it from there. We'll have a future video in the course kind of applicable to all AI art generators for how to upscale them even further and treat them nicely to make them appropriate for print. So get subscribed for that one. But full playlist link with my Mid Journey Masterclass will be in the description down below. Follow at your own pace. Take your time. Remember to have fun with it. This, is, this gets super nerdy and things like that. But remember, the goal with this course is to knock down those barriers and make it easier for you. So if you're getting stressed out or overwhelmed, just take a step back, rewind if you need to, go at your own pace. And just remember, it's all about being creative and having fun, not getting stressed out about little details. I hope you enjoy. For this demonstration, we're going to be using one of the generations we did in a previous episode, trying to narrow down our Space Emperor concept. This is the four image grid that it generates when you originally pose a concept to the prompt for it to create an image for you with Mid Journey. Now, I previously showed you that you have controls to upscale or create variations of each of the four images in the grid. But if you're trying to be super like super tight and, and, and conservative with your credits, you may wonder if you can just take this grid and run with it. And the answer is mostly no. Because the grid itself here, which I have saved out and pulled up, is only 512 by 512 pixels in resolution at 72 pixels per inch, which is not going to be good enough to even post on social media, nevertheless print out or use for anything. And that's for all four together. That means if you crop out one of them, it's only a fourth of that resolution at 256 by 256. And you can see here, even just blowing it up to see it on screen here, it is a pixelated mess. Even with the best of like AI upscalers, you're not going to get a whole lot of usable image trying to upscale something so low. And so that is where at least the base pressing U1 or U3, U2, U4 on this will let you upscale an image. And so I've gone through and we're going to explore the different upscaling options. So there are multiple different types of upscaling and different stages of upscaling within Midjourney. There's the standard upscale, there's max upscale, there's light upscale, and then there's a brand new, which just dropped uh, in the week of recording, a new beta upscaler, which all work completely differently. So we're going to go through each one so I can help you understand what they do and how you might want to use them. That way you're not wasting credits. Just what I, what I tend to do for my projects is I would just throw all four upscalers at an image and see what I like best or see what I want to blend together. And while that's useful for some use cases, if you're just trying to get like a better quality copy, it gets kind of wasteful. So when you first click U1, that does the base, just the normal upscaling process. This is something that actually adds in more detail to the image because really the four grid array is kind of meant to just be like a sample of the prompt that you give it. And then you choose it and you tell it to take that sample a little bit further. And that gives you your upscale image. Now you can see here, there's a fair bit of difference between the original image in low resolution and the upscaled image. It added a ton of detail here. We've got stars dotting the sky. We've got like a starry texture over the planet, a little dither effect on a glow around the planet. The ship has a ton more details. This is what it does. And this generates an image that is 1024 by 1024 in size, assuming you are in the one to one aspect ratio. Obviously, it'll scale a little bit differently depending on your aspect ratio. So if you're in 16 by 9, it'll be 2048 by 1152, which is ever so slightly bigger than 1080p. Pretty cool there. But you may look at that and be like, wow, that is a different image than I was picturing in my head from the smaller version. I don't necessarily like all the details. Maybe you want some of it. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to mask it out, do a little bit of photo bashing. But if you don't like that, what that is, then you have the option to take that upscaled image in two directions. So here's that one. 
you can either upscale it to max, which is then just going to do a typical AI upscale to increase the resolution without adding more to the image. Because effectively, the first upscale pass does a extra rendering pass to actually increase the detail and information in your render. You can take that and then just blow it up bigger. Or you can do what's called a light upscale redo, which takes it back from the source, you know, super small image and redoes that secondary render pass, but by adding less details to it. And that looks a little something like this. It still adds a little bit more detail than you might have expected to be here. Like the planet is just kind of a pure gradient here, whereas in the light upscaled image, it saw some swirly clouds, some dots. They've added some ships in front of it. And in fact, it has details that aren't present in the original upscale because it does do a redo of trying to generate from that original render progress. Basically, it pauses it for the preview of the four grid, and then it continue, continues going with different parameters as you go past that. So we got a, a, a fairly different looking image here. But it's less detailed. It's less gritty. It's going to have less distracting elements. Sometimes you may actually find these little extra ships and red bits to be a little bit more distracting. And this creates mostly a similar 1024 size image with the light upscale. That light upscale can then be upscaled to max again. And so you then have two different paths that you can take the max. So the max upscale for your standard upscale creates an image that is 1664 by 1664, again, or tweaked. So a little more than, say, 1440p. The light upscale, if you take it to max, generates 1536 by 1536. So the, the peak resolution you can get out of mid-journey for the light upscale is technically a little bit lower than the detailed version. But I think that's okay because the less you, you need the more detail to be preserved if you're going to take it a step further. So that's those two buttons. And now there's a new beta upscale redo button that takes it through a completely different upscaling algorithm that tries to remain more faithful to the original image it showed you in the preview without adding those gritty details. And that gets really fascinating because that versus that versus that are very different takes on that tiny little blurry preview. And arguably the beta one is a lot more like faithful to that blurry preview. And maybe that creates something that you want. For example, you might prefer the more gradienty planet, although it has a bunch of stars showing through the planet, which isn't realistic, so you'd have to heal those out. Or maybe you like the simpler sky or the simpler bottom down here. And so you can take this with the detailed and the light upscales and kind of blend some of those elements together if you prefer the more detailed ship, for example. And maybe the more detailed clouds over here, and you can blend those together. Now the beta upscale redo goes even higher resolution at a size of 2048 by 2048. So it doubles the resolution of your original image that you might get, which is really cool. So that is the way that you would get the biggest size, but the least details because it can create a bigger image if it's generating less details. Kind of makes sense. However, it is worth noting that even though it highlights these buttons to show that you've done a beta upscale, light upscale, a max upscale, whatever, you do have the option of just pressing it again and getting a slightly different result. So I'm gonna press beta upscale, and even though we've already done it, it's gonna fire off that process again, and we're gonna get, because it, since it's AI and it's thinking about it and recomputing it every time, we're gonna end up with something that's ever so slightly different than the beta upscale we got the first time. So here's our new beta upscaled image. This one versus the original. You can see it's different. It's almost as if compression is kind of loading and unloading differently on the image. And if we continue zooming in, you can see there are just ever so slightly little different details that turn out different. Like there's different stars, a little bit of different texture on the ship that it decided was a hunk of like demonic meat instead of a spaceship, which is an interesting approach. The glow around the planet is a little bit different. And then the kind of cloud ground coverage at the bottom differs a little bit as well. So again, it's mostly going to look the same, but it's going to be ever so slightly different. And you can do that with all of the render modes. You can just, obviously I wouldn't just sit there and, and redo it over and over and over. But you can fire off any of those to repeat themselves and get slightly tweaked results. And of course they give you buttons after each render to try out the other render modes if that's what you want to do. You can also rate your upscale process. So you can say this one's great, this one's eh, and it will use those ratings to kind of tune the machine learning, the artificial intelligence to have it improve 
the upscaling methods and upscaling results. So don't abuse it or you could get banned, but by rating your results, you can help fine tune where you think the upscales should go to produce better results in the long run, which is really cool and a kind of benefit of artificial intelligence that you don't get with just like normal Photoshop scaling or what have you. Do you need to do the max scaling? No. Whether you use a light scale or a standard scale, you do not need to use the max upscale option to get you all the way to 1664 or whatever. Because all this does, this doesn't add more details to your standard scale. If we put those side by side, it didn't actually add more details. It might have finely tuned your details here, but it didn't necessarily add new ones. So if you like where the level of detail is at this point, you can then use a separate program like, say, Topaz Labs' Gigapixel and drag in your image of the 1024 size. And you can go all the way up to 6x. You can technically type in, type in a specific one to go all the way up to 32% or 3200 scale. But you can try out the different AI models and scale your image from there. But of course, that requires you to be accept, you know, accepting of the level of detail you get here. So for example, with our normal first stage of scaling, the stars kind of look like rocks. So by upscaling it with Topaz Labs, we get some very emphasized detail on these kind of rocky looking stars that almost turn into like a bump map texture. Whereas in the max scale, they smoothed out a lot more. So it completely depends on your use case. Personally, since I'm a paying user and I have the money to throw at it and that's kind of what I wanna do, I'm mostly gonna continue to use max. But you can take it from there and save yourself on a little bit of credit if you like where it lands on the first scale detail wise, you can then push it yourself. You can also use Photoshop scaling. So if you go over here to image size, there are a bunch of different resize resampling algorithms. And you've got one for enlargement. Um, you got smoothing one for enlargement. So for example, with this one, let's say I want to boost it up 600% like we did with Topaz. This is preserved details 2.0, which was added in recent updates and does a better job at enlargement, but perhaps I don't want it to get so sharp when I enlarge it. I can do a smoothing one, and you can see here it's a little bit more blurry. I can do the original enlargement one, which is going to be a little bit more contrasty in the enlargement instead of just sharpening. But then there are specific algorithms for smooth gradients and hard edges like pixel art. You pretty much always want to use nearest neighbor. Bilinear is going to be super fast, but way more blurry. And then there's a bicubic sharper specifically for shrinking images that isn't really going to make sense for blowing them up. So you can do things like that in here. I usually use Preserve Details 2.0 to expand. And then we get an image that is going to kind of look similar to the Topaz one. Topaz is going to do a little bit better because the AI is a little bit better than just a general upscaling algorithm. But you can see how much of a difference that made in terms of size. <laughs> But you have all of these options available to you within Midjourney. And you can also set some of these as defaults. So I referenced before the slash settings command. If you pull that up, you can actually set your default to use light upscale or beta upscale instead. And all that does is add a suffix, the, the parameter to the end of your command of dash dash uplight or dash dash beta scale, I think. Uh, up beta. So up beta or up light, or you just do the regular one. But if you do that, if, say, you're doing a lot of portrait work or a lot of more simplistic abstract art styles and you don't want it to be adding a bunch more gritty, grungy details to your images, you can set that as your default and save yourself a lot of hassle having to type that out every time or click the right option every time. So if I do something like this with light up scale, then every time I type in a thing, port portrait of a man with blue hair. Every time with that uplight or beta light flag, every time you click one of the U options below one of the images, instead of having to do the scale and then do the light up scale redo or the beta up scale redo and doubling up on your action steps, it'll just immediately prefer the light or the beta upscaling algorithm and save yourself a little time. So that is pretty nice. It's cool that you can really tweak and customize your experience. You just got to remember when you do that. So then you can go and undo it if you want to do something else so you don't expect different results. You can see here we got three portraits of a man with blue hair. One of them has white hair, but he has a blue beard that is like melting all over his face. So then if we go in here with number four, because again, light up scale does a little bit better with portraits. If we do U4, 
You can see it has the up light command. It's going to do a light scale, upscaling light by default instead of the normal scale. I also, again, want to demonstrate the advantage of using both or all three, I guess, of the upscaling algorithms for your purpose, as I can come in here and copy the light upscale into my composition with the max upscale. Okay, something worth keeping in mind. I'm going to not do that here. But when you're just control T transforming in Photoshop and scaling an image, you only have access to a couple of these scaling algorithms. You don't have the new preserve details one. So you kind of want to size it up in the image settings of an individual individual like composition here to get the best results. But I'm just going to be lazy and transform tool it. But if I put these together on the same comp, they're going to line up more or less perfectly because they're the same file. And then I can blend them together. So if I break out my pen and my tablet here, I can put a mask over the light upscale and have it sitting over top of the detailed upscale. And then I can say, for example, I want the more simple space. So come in here with a very soft brush and just mask out that simpler space. We do get some color shifts as a result of the scaling process. So we're going to have to tweak our colors as we go, but I can just come in here and you know, just gently paint on the simpler extra space that it generated here. And blend those together. So then I have a much less distracting image and maybe I want the same down here. If I come down here for the little ground section and just gently mask that in over top. And now we have a much better well-rounded image. I do need to come in here to the image here and content aware fill a couple things because this right here is a problem edit content aware fill which also uses AI by the way uh, yeah take from that that's fine you can see that messes things up a little bit we can come back to our mask and mask away the border of that and then we can use we can combine them in a minute and heel brush some of that issue away. But then same thing over here with these little doodads. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. And instead of trying to mask back and forth with varying detail levels, I can just content aware fill these spaces. Nope. Then I can group them up, convert that to smart object, duplicate it, hide the first one, rasterize that layer, and then we can use the spot healing brush to try to blend in. That just turned it into something transparent. Oh no, that's what it's supposed to be. Then we can use the spot healing brush to try to blend these a little bit better. not going to do a great job on this big chunk up there. I should have masked that a little bit differently, but we can come in here and spot heal away that at the bottom. Honestly, these I don't even really notice. Those turn out perfectly. So it's just this big one up front. That's a bit of an eyesore. Try to mask that in. That's not really working, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to fight with it too much. But you get the idea. So you can blend between them and then heal up each one individually. And then you get a best of both worlds versus just the over-detailed, over-bearing sky and bottom. We get the simple sky. And the planet's detail has a little bit more impact than it would have if the whole thing was all, you know, completely over-detailed. So I hope that makes it make a little bit more sense for you. I know, you know, if you're used to just generating images and leaving them as is, this might be a weird concept, but it's a way you can have a lot better time creating final images. And I do hope this upscaling video has been helpful for you. The whole goal was to just walk you through the options. We're going to have a whole separate video dedicated to third-party upscaling options on the web and downloadable tools that you can use, as well as a third video later about mobile upscaling options if you're doing a mobile workflow, because I've actually fallen in love with my iPad Pro as a mid-journey tool. So we're going to have lots of content about that. Get subscribed to the Analog Dreams YouTube channel if you haven't already as we have a lot going on here. And check out my Threadless shop, analogdreams.threadless.com, if you want to pick up some of my merch and things like that using AI and analog glitch art as well. 
Thank you so much for watching. Remember to be kind. Rewind.